Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to do a meiosis exam question that you can use to prepare for tests or upcoming final exams and I suggest that if you'd like to attempt the questions pause the video now before I go through how to answer them and the memo. Now I will be doing many more of these exam kind of questions where I walk you through the exam both on my main page but also a lot more of these will be put up for my members only page as well and you can take a look at that depending on what you need. I specifically do these kinds of videos for grade 12s. So let's get into breaking down this particular question. It's really important to always orientate yourself with the diagram long before you even start reading the questions. Often what happens is you misunderstand the questions because you haven't taken enough time to look at the diagram and really interpret what you see. Now, the opening statement for this diagram is that it represents a phase of meiosis. So they're not telling us very much. If we look down at the photograph below, there are some clues as to what phase of meiosis we're actually in. The first clue is that there are two cells. Now in meiosis, there's meiosis one and meiosis two. In meiosis one, we produce two haploid non-identical cells. At the end of meiosis two, we produce four. Now, that can be a way we can tell the difference between meiosis one and two. However, they can only sometimes just show you one cell. They don't necessarily have to show you all four. So what's the other thing that you need to look out for? Well, let's have a look at the chromosomes because they're actually telling us a lot in this picture. The first thing I'd like you to notice is you'll see that they are mixed in color. In other words, some of the black has swapped with some of the white on these chromosomes, which is important. That means crossing over has already taken place. And if crossing over has already taken place and there are now two separate cells with chromosomes that are recombinant or they've recombined their DNA, the only possible phase that we could be in is telophase one. We're right at the very end of meiosis one. Another clue that we are in telophase is, do you notice here that the nuclear membrane is reappearing? It only reappears once we have finished dividing the chromosomes. Another clue is that homologous partners have been separated. And the homologous partners in this picture here are represented by the chromosomes that are the same colors. For example, this black chromosome down here is partner number one, and this black chromosome over here is partner number two for chromosome pair number one. So they're both pairs, but they're in separate cells. So that tells us that we are in meiosis one. Now, if we go over to the questions, this is going to help a lot because the first question says, identify the phase of meiosis in the diagram above. And we've already worked this through. We know, one, we're in meiosis one, and two, there are two separate cells where the homologous pairs have separated and a nuclear membrane is reappearing. Therefore, this can only be telophase one. Now, the next question says, draw a diagram, and you need to be prepared to draw any phase of meiosis. And it says, to draw a phase where only two gametes have formed from cell A, and they're being very specific about cell A, and it says no labels are required. Sometimes they will ask you for labels, so you do need to be prepared to provide at least three labels for any diagram you draw. Now, they only want the drawing of A which is really important, and I will tell you why. If you look carefully, you will notice that the chromosomes and how they are colored in are different. They are not the same in B. So if by accident you start coloring them in incorrectly, you are going to lose marks for your diagram. Now remember, they are asking for the two gametes that are formed from cell A. So that means you're only going to draw the chromosomes that you can see in cell A, which means that you only need to draw two gametes, which means two cells. No, you don't have to draw a sperm cell. No, you don't have to draw an egg cell. Because does it say anywhere in the question male gamete or female gamete? No. So you draw a basic gamete. In other words, just a circle to represent the um, cell. And then you need to make sure that you are only drawing two, which means you have to separate the chromatids carefully.
Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is when you pull apart these chromatids over here, you need to make sure that you're going to draw them in the same way that you see them and only one of each. So I'll show you what I mean now. If I take the first one, it's completely colored in black. So I'm going to color in the whole thing black. But I can't draw its partner sitting up against it. I need to take a chromosome or a chromatid from this other chromosome that I see. And so I'm actually only going to draw one that is not colored in, just like that. Now I need to draw the other one. So I can't draw the same thing because I've used two of them already. Now I need to use maybe two of the others. So I'm going to use this inner one along with its partner from the other chromosome. So that one is a black chromosome where it is partially colored in at the bottom. And it's a little bit of a white section at the top. And then the other one you will see is white in the center. And it's got a black end colored in on the one side and a black end colored in on the inside. And that's one version of the cells that you can draw. In the memo, you'll see now one of the other options that you can get. Now, the final question says tabulate. When you tabulate, everybody, it means to draw a table. And you need to give two differences between prophase one and prophase two. Now, that means you need to know what's important that happens there. And what do we know happens in meiosis? One, particularly prophase one, crossing over. Does crossing over take place in prophase two? No, that's a difference. So crossing over takes place doesn't take place. The next difference is a tricky one because you've really got to think about what is the difference between the prophases. The main difference is the number of chromosomes. In prophase one, the chromosomes are still diploid. There is still a diploid number. However, in prophase two, they are now haploid. And you'll be able to see that once I show you the memo answer. Now, I like to show the official memo because it shows you exactly how it's marked and also what to look out for. And I'm going to quickly bring your attention specifically to the drawing of our meiosis phases. Now, as you can see, there are options. So you either have to have all of the drawings on the left or all of the drawings on the right. And as you saw earlier, I drew this one over here on the right hand side. You could have also drawn the one on the left. Now, if you look at the marking guideline, you can see that you get a mark for only two gametes, that your gametes contain only two chromosomes. They must be unreplicated. In other words, they're not attached anymore and that there is correct shading. And that's what gets you the four out of four. If we go over to the table answer, it's out of five. You get one mark for drawing the table, and then your remaining marks go towards the differences. And so the differences are either the cell is diploid or haploid, or has homologous chromosomes, does not have homologous chromosomes, crossing over takes place, as we mentioned, or no crossing over takes place. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn your notifications on. I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, don't forget to comment below what topic you'd like to see next on a test question or an exam. Don't forget, I'll be doing a lot more of these video on my members only page. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.